Now, a lot of guys would tell you that a revolver is a poor choice for a duty weapon. I would tend to disagree. All right, man, take a seat. Look, look. We're nearly, we'd start with uh, orientation of the car here, but we got calls pending and we got to get to them. So, we're rolling. We're going to have to learn on the way. All right, today, I. There's several very good reasons why. One, right off the bat, is that revolvers are easy, very easy, especially in an environment where you're going to have to load and unload them often to show clear. To unload a revolver, all you have to do is open it up, pop the rounds out, and it makes it very evident that the thing's unloaded. There's no guesswork to it. You can see down the cylinders. I got a whole video on unloading common duty weapons. So in an environment where you have to load and unload the gun a lot, let's say it's a gun that's going into the safe every day, it's going to get unloaded by the company and then put into a safe and then reloaded by someone the next day, and every day someone, possibly somebody's supervisor, is going to have to take the gun, show that it's clear, it makes it a lot easier. Now this might be a minor inconvenience in a lot of environments, but in some of them it becomes critical. Let's say your job is working in a healthcare environment where you're going to have to go in and out of a psych ward. And the policy says you have to unload the gun every day. Well, a revolver makes a lot of sense for that. It's very easy to unload and reload, and you're not putting wear on the springs and ammunition every time you're doing it. This is why you see it a lot in security in, in the security industry, is it's very easy for companies to tell that the gun's unloaded when they lock it up. And it's also very easy to tell if they see one of their people walking around with this pistol that it's unloaded. So you can actually see if the rim of a cartridge is inside, you can tell if the gun's loaded. So if one of your guys is walking around with an unloaded gun, you know right up front. Now, I know what you're saying, yeah, that's great, but they probably shouldn't be hiring people who you can't trust to load and unload a gun properly or to keep their gun loaded or to unload it right. Well, I would tend to agree with you, but that's not always the environment that we're working with, and that's not always the realities for every company. Now, for the individual officer, this makes a lot of sense as a duty weapon if you know that you're very unlikely to actually have to shoot someone. Now, this happens in the security industry a lot more than people like to admit. Very often, I find myself doing gigs where I'm going to be at a warehouse, and I'm going to be the only one at the warehouse, and I'm going to be there all night, and they want someone to be armed who is there. Now... I don't have backup, I don't have a radio because there's no one to call, and if I have to fight with someone, I don't want to worry about whether or not they're going to get my ultra-expensive and very powerful semi-automatic pistol. Very often, I will choose a revolver because not only does it limit the amount of damage that could be done if someone did get my pistol from me. Let's say I get jumped by three dudes and they pull the pistol and run, which is not unheard of in the security industry. In fact, it is quite common. Also, if you get jumped at 3 o'clock in the morning when you're working at that warehouse, if you have a semi-auto and you go to press it into the person because they're right on top of you and they have a knife or they've got a gun or whatever the situation is, your life's in danger and you need to press your pistol into your assailant, with a semi-auto, it might only be a one-shot or a zero-shot affair because the slide could come out of battery. With a revolver, you just push it into the assailant, pull the trigger, and then keep pulling it. And you know you're going to get at least six shots instead of one. And if we're more worried about getting jumped, working at a warehouse at 3 o'clock in the morning, than Al-Qaeda coming and getting into an extended gun battle with us, six shots of 357 that we know are going to be there are way better than 20 shots of 9mm or 16 of 40 or 12 of 45 or whatever your semi-auto is going to carry because these are more likely to be there for you for the situation that's most likely to be at hand. Also, I can change out cartridges depending on what environment I'm working in. Sometimes I work in an outdoor environment where I may have to switch from anti-personnel type ammunition, hollow point ammunition, to hard ball, um, hard cast rounds if I'm working in an environment where there's some sort of dangerous game around, or I might have to change out to snake shot, and nothing works better for that in the security environment than a good, solid, heavy-duty, double-action 357. Revolvers make a lot of sense 
from an economic standpoint too. Now if you tried to buy something like this Smith 686 new, it'd run you about $750 to $800 depending on where you were buying it from. However, I bought this particular one used. I bought it from a guy who's a cop and who's retiring. This, along with the duty belt for it, ammunition, two speed loaders, a cuff case, and the belt, and a good level three plus holster, which is really good for takeaways, again, getting back to that getting jumped at three o'clock in the morning in a warehouse thing, only cost me $420. Because at the time I bought this, the Iowa State Police were clearing all of these out with holsters and speed loaders and all of that out of their inventory, and were only charging $450. So if you look around, you can find exceptionally good deals on these old police trade and revolvers. Still today in 2016, I just bought this thing a couple years ago, and still today in 2016, if you go through gun forums and you go through like gun broker and all that stuff, you're gonna find really good deals on old police trade and revolvers. And since a lot of security companies require that you use a certain type of ammunition, and oftentimes they'll say there's one semi-auto ammunition, often it's nine millimeter or 357 or 38 special, depending on the contract that they're at. This fulfills most of those roles. Now, late at night, one big advantage of these nice, shiny, stainless finishes is that this sticks out. And unlike a semi-auto that very often has rounded parts to it, this has huge flats and rounded parts, so when the light is glinting off of it as you're walking around in a dark environment, people can clearly see that it's a gun. Going back to a bunch of my old security videos that you can see up here, oftentimes the biggest part of our job is scaring people away so they go do their thievery somewhere else instead of where we're at. And if they can clearly see this big old hog's leg on my hip and they know the guy down the street doesn't have one, that's a big bonus for me, where if I use a black, very subdued semi-auto, or one that has kind of a brush, a semi-auto that has a very common brush finish, they might not see that pistol that I have. And sometimes that becomes a critical issue when we're talking about security and just scaring people away so that they go do their crime somewhere else. Another thing to take into account is legality. Now with a semi-auto, in some jurisdictions if you're working as a security guard, there's magazine capacity limits. The great thing about a six-shot 357 revolver is that you get an awful lot of power and an awful lot of range in what you can do with it with the least amount of legal restrictions of just about any type of handgun. These are legal, as far as I know, for security guards to use everywhere in the United States. So if I have to hop borders and work security somewhere like in the state of New York, where there's limitations on it, or inside a major metro area where there's magazine capacity restrictions on what security guards can use, or if I have a particular contract, let's say with a bank, where they have, they're carrying federal insurance that says that you have to carry a 357 or a 38, this covers all my bases, so it's a very flexible platform to use as a security guard for a duty weapon. And finally, ammunition, parts, holsters, and training with these is abundant and plentiful just about anywhere inside the United States. You can find ammunition for these very easily. If you go with a 357 like this one, which is what I would suggest, you can load it with 38s, you can load it with 38 specials, you can load it with snake shot, you can load it with hard cast. It can run the entire gambit of what you need a handgun to do in a defensive situation. From big game to humans to all the way down to snakes. If you need parts for it, Parts are readily available. These have been in production for decades and decades and decades. The designs are well thought through, and with modern metallurgy, they're stronger than ever. Revolvers are available in a variety of materials, which can run them from very, very light guns to very, very heavy guns in 357. And they're very easy to use with dry fire practice to keep your skills up when you're working or when you're off. You can dry fire most center fire revolvers all day just by unloading them, which is very easy to check, and make sure that they're clear. Putting up a target somewhere where up against a tree or somewhere where it's not going to hurt anything should you make a mistake, but you shouldn't with this type of gun, and you can just practice your slow trigger pulls without having to worry about magazines or rounds in chambers or magazine safeties or any of that. A lot of guns that come with magazine safeties, it's hard to do dry fire practice with them because you have to insert an empty magazine and then you have to 
drop the slide every time you're trying to fire or cock a hammer back or all of that. Revolvers work the same way empty and give you the same experience with them empty dry fire as they do when they're live. That's a big advantage for these, especially if you're new to handguns. Now, I know the double action revolver might not be for everybody who's in the security industry, but if you're new and you're new to handguns, this is a really good option. It's economical, it's easily serviceable, it's very flexible, the ammunition is plentiful, you can get training with it just about anywhere. It solves you a lot of problems legally if you have to move to a new part of the country and you're going to bring your gun with. And in most places, this is perfectly legal. So let's say you're living in Missouri and you have to move to New York for work. You quit your security job. You don't have to sell the gun when you move. You can keep this with you. This is the, the type of gun that you buy once and you can keep for the rest of your life just about anywhere you live. And nobody says that you can't just go buy another one later on when you get more comfortable with firearms. This is a great entry level gun and you can always pass it on to the next person. And these are easy to sell. You get somebody new, let's say you get four or five years on doing the security thing, or you get a police job, you get another gun, you wanna get rid of your old revolver, they're easy to sell the new people coming in. You just explain to them what I just explained to you. Well, if you like that video, go ahead and subscribe because there's a whole lot more to come. As soon as I uh, finish up these calls, Go 10-8. County 291. 291. 